Well, you know, I think that public speaking is something that just about every person gets anxiety over or gets nervous about. And I don't care if you're very, very seasoned or you're new at this, it's not an easy thing to do. I don't care who you are. And if you, I think that when you rank things that make people anxious, public mm -hmm. speaking tends to land at the top of the list. Yeah. However, I think there's a way to overcome that. And for me, you know, I have not always been a good public mm -hmm. speaker. I've, you know, and I still do this today. I speak very, very quickly because mm -hmm. my mind just works very fast. And mm -hmm. it's just, very, being very conscious of your audience. It's knowing your topic, mm -hmm. but it's also just developing confidence. And I think with any skill, the more you do it, the better you become. And so I started getting into public speaking when I decided to run for office in 2007. Really? Yeah. Not until then? Not really. You know, I mean, I'd served on boards and commissions, but I think that when you decide to put yourself out there as a candidate, you just do a lot of public speaking because mm -hmm. there are a lot of forums, you're having to present yourself, and that's really where I got started in the public speaking realm. Mm -hmm. Well, the first time I had to do a speech in front of a group of about 20 people who were some of my earliest supporters, and it's called practicing your stump speech. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the people who are my closest supporters and friends and family, I had to make a speech in front of them to make my case for why I wanted to run for office. Mm -hmm. And so that was really the first time I did it. And then, you know, from there, you start to, again, on the campaign trail, you meet mm -hmm. lots of people. And then, you know, it, this is the um, fourth year of my first term as mayor. Mm -hmm. And as you may guess, I get a lot of requests for public speaking now. Yeah, and yeah. so it ranges from speaking to, you know, elementary school students, mm -hmm. to college students, to large groups such as Rotary. Um, last night I spoke at the NAACP, one, NAACP mm -hmm. 100th anniversary event. So, mm -hmm. you know, you, those, those, those things start to roll in. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that, you know, as a person, I've been competent, but you know, getting on a stage and speaking in front of a group of people, that can be really unnerving. And so I would say when I started, I would get really nervous about it. I'm much more confident and much more at ease with it now. But it took a while to get there. I think there are certain practices, you know, I tell people, I said, always be prepared and know the subject. I mean, that always helps. And sometimes you're asked to do things on the fly and mm -hmm. that comes up as well, but mm -hmm. know your topic and be prepared. And, mm -hmm. you know, w when I get notes or speaking points, you know, I, I look at them, I read them very carefully, and sometimes I don't use them at all because they're mm -hmm. in my mind. And sometimes given the tone of the conversation, it takes a different direction. So I'd say be prepared, mm -hmm. but also be prepared to improvise if you need to. Mm -hmm. Um, I say that the most effective speech I've ever given, there, there have been a few that I really enjoy. Um, I was asked to be the keynote speaker at the Tacoma Pierce County Bar Association mm -hmm. Lincoln Dinner, and they do this every year. And I was intimidated. I said, well, these are judges and attorneys and, mm -hmm. you know, professionals who are in this field. Mm -hmm. And I was just asked to speak about Abraham Lincoln and how it relates to my life. Mm -hmm. And so I was given, I think, 15 minutes to speak. I used eight minutes and actually received a quite a few compliments for that alone. <laughs> and, and, and then also, too, just spoke from the heart about my family's experience. Mm -hmm. And just, you know, starting with, you know, my father being born in 1920 in rural Georgia, mm -hmm. the civil rights movement during his lifetime, during my lifetime, and tying it back to the preamble to the Constitution mm -hmm. and the Emancipation Proclamation. And so, again, it's being familiar with your topic. And I think also, too, just speaking from your heart and being very, very honest about how you feel about something. I think sometimes people speak in front of groups and they think they have to give a certain presentation mm -hmm. and it comes off as insincere and inauthentic. But mm -hmm. if you speak about things you truly believe, mm -hmm. that you truly matter to you, mm -hmm. and you prepare, that's really the best way to come across as a very effective public speaker. I enjoy it because when you're talking in front of groups of people, you can tell whether you're connecting with them mm -hmm. and whether you're not. Mm -hmm. And sometimes mm -hmm. as you're watching the audience, you may have to shift gears a little or go in a different mm -hmm. direction, but it's always gratifying that after when I speak, I have people come up to me saying, wow, I really enjoy your presentation. Or mm -hmm. even when I see people months later, they said, oh, you spoke at this event mm -hmm. and it really resonated with me and I mm -hmm. really remember what you said. So mm -hmm. there's a way to really reach people and connect mm -hmm. with them. And that's really what effective public speaking about is about. It's not just mm -hmm. about you getting your message out there, it's connecting mm -hmm. with your audience. I, you know, I was at an event a few weeks ago and someone said to me, they said, I really, like your, I really liked your speech because mm -hmm. it was very conversational. 
and that's really my style. That's what works best for me. Mm -hmm. But you know, it, it's relaxed, it's laid back. Even if the venue is formal, mm -hmm. you again, communication style is really important. And so when I talk to people, it's not again, it's about trying to make that connection. It helps to be smart. It helps to have a good memory, and it yeah. helps to really know your topic really well. But mm -hmm. if you're asked to speak about something where you don't have that much expertise, mm -hmm. you, you can. That is absolutely something you can still handle mm -hmm. if you prepare. Mm -hmm. You know, I've seen humor used in presentations, and sometimes it works really well, and sometimes it doesn't. And I think because I spend a lot of time making public speeches and talking in front of groups of people, I can tell that there are what I call kind of like canned jokes that people use in yeah. front of people. And, you know, they can be funny, but also they can be insincere. And so humor sometimes is necessary. Um, I think humor is good. You know, people like to see that you're self-effacing. Mm. And so I think that tends to work well. But it's not necessary. I mean, I, I wouldn't say write a speech, insert joke here, insert oh. joke there. I think, again, it, it, there, you have to connect with people, and it has to mm. feel authentic. And humor can be very spontaneous. Mm. You know, I've used humor when um, I had to present an award to someone, and the award was in an envelope. And so I had to fumble with it in front of everyone. And I said, hold on one second. We're having a slight technical difficulty. And I just explained what was happening. I said, all right, we're back to our regularly scheduled programming. And so, you know, just little <laughs> things like that that yeah. kind of help you get through a situation that's a little awkward, but also show people, you know what, it's not that big of a deal. We'll just oh. get through this little moment. I don't have a script that says insert joke here. That's, yeah. that's not my style. But, you know, that may work for some people, mm -hmm. especially if they have a topic that they're speaking of to if, if, if there is one speech you're giving and you're giving it to a vast number of people or different audiences, mm -hmm. maybe it works. And sometimes you can test those things and see how they're received. But mm -hmm. I tend not to write jokes into my scripts. I just tend to do it on the fly if I think it's necessary. Mm -hmm. I think stories are really how you connect with people because every person has some personal experience that someone else can relate to. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it can be anything from telling anecdotes about what it was like when you were a kid doing something. Um, it can be a story that talks about your experience with your spouse or your parents, mm -hmm. with your pet. I mean, you know, there, there are just certain things that most people can relate to. And I think really, too, when you speak in front of groups of people, especially in my position, I think that sometimes people, they connect with the fact that you're just a regular person who has a different job. And I think mm -hmm. that's really important. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I speak to groups about philanthropy mm. and generosity and the, the, rela the, the responsibility that we have to help each other. Mm. And I sometimes tell the story of um, this dog I have. And this, I've had this dog for seven years now, and he was a little puppy when I, you know, when I first got him. And I would walk him downtown. And there was a man downtown who was homeless, and you'd see him on the street regularly. And I was walking past this man, and I stopped because my dog stopped, because my dog mm -hmm. was very friendly. My dog loved everyone, my little puppy. So he was jumping up on the man, and the man said, is it okay if I pet him and hold him? And so he picked up my dog, and he was petting him and holding him and loving him. And then he put him down, and the man looked at me with tears in his eyes, and he said, thank you. Mm -hmm. And that story stays with me because mm -hmm. it reminded me that there are some people who are very vulnerable mm -hmm. in our community. We want to ignore them and pretend they're not there. And because people treat him like that all the time, mm -hmm. having an interaction with a pet that loved him mm -hmm. for who he was was so mm -hmm. moving to him. Mm -hmm. And so I tell that story a lot when I'm in circles mm -hmm. dealing with philanthropy and mm -hmm. giving and how it's important to respect people. Mm -hmm. well, I think that one of the advantages I have is a, as a speaker is that I'm a good writer. And so when you have the skill to very quickly just write your own speech and organize your thoughts, mm -hmm. that's a great skill to have. Mm -hmm. So if it's hard for you to communicate on paper and write, it's going to make it, in my opinion, a little harder to mm -hmm. develop a speech and a style. So I think being a good writer is important. Um, I will say that in all of my experience giving speeches or making presentations, leave them wanting more. I think mm -hmm. people tend to speak mm -hmm. longer than they need to to make their point. Mm -hmm. And so if you're on a a program and they say you have 15 minutes, you're not required to use all 15 of those minutes because most events will run t over time anyway. Yeah. So if you're given a lot of time, don't feel obligated to fill every minute to make mm -hmm. your point because mm -hmm. sometimes brevity is more effective than just mm -hmm. talking to fill space. Mm -hmm. okay, don't get obsessed with the amount of time you have. Think about mm -hmm. how tight the message is and your ability to deliver it to people in a way that connects with them. Mm -hmm.
Well, I think that, you know, in my line of work, I'll do a presentation and sometimes I'll open up the floor for questions. And again, know your topic. And, mm -hmm. you know, and I think also to tell the truth. That's, <laughs> I know it sounds like very simple advice, but tell the truth and make sure that when you are saying something that may be controversial, that you give it context. So mm -hmm. if you say something, say, you know, here's what I believe and here's why. Mm -hmm. And then that way it gives people context. In my line of work especially, mm -hmm. you will get antagonistic questions. Mm -hmm. And the first thing I do when I get an antagonistic question is I thank them for asking the question. Mm -hmm. I respect it. Mm -hmm. And I say, and you know, here's the situation. Sometimes the question is, is antagonistic because it's based on misinformation. And sometimes mm -hmm. I have an opportunity to correct and say, actually, mm -hmm. that's not true. Here's what the situation is. Mm -hmm. And sometimes an antagonistic question about a situation that is absolutely true. And so, for me, you take ownership of the situation, mm -hmm. you talk about what's happening, and then you talk about what you want to do to correct it. Mm -hmm. I think that some of them are, and again, everyone's different at this, someone who's just literally reading from a script, mm -hmm. and it sounds like they're reading from a script. I mean, if you're going to read from a script, and people do that all the time, at least put some emotion into it, and some mm -hmm. inflection, and to, and to say it like you mean it. Mm -hmm. Um, I, think, I think another thing I see is that people read from a script and they make no eye contact with their audience. Mm -hmm. And so they're at a podium, they have this very nice scripted message, and they're not taking the time to pause, to look up and connect with people, to see mm -hmm. what they're saying. And there's nothing wrong with pausing during a speech. And sometimes the mm -hmm. silence can actually be an exclamation point. Mm -hmm. And so just having the ability to think about the nuances of this conversation you're having with a group of people, mm -hmm. whether it's 25 people or 250 people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that, again, it's finding a way to connect with people so that the argument you're trying to make is something that resonates with them. Mm -hmm. And, you know, again, it's sometimes when you go into a room, I mean, I, I often ask people before I go to a presentation, mm -hmm. who will be there, what's their background, how many people are there, and why are they there? Because mm -hmm. if, you, if you have a gauge of what that is, then it will better prepare you for that type of a persuasive presentation. Mm -hmm. And I think also, too, when it's persuasion, I tell people, I said, you know, I'm not here to tell you how to blank, mm -hmm. but this is why I think this makes sense. Mm -hmm. And I think that if you're willing to say, I put my name behind this, that means, okay, I believe it, and mm -hmm. this is why I think it's important. There was a very controversial issue on the ballot in 2012 mm -hmm. about public charter schools. Mm -hmm. And it was narrowly approved by the voters of Washington State. Mm -hmm. And there were, there were some people who were very, very um, against the idea of public charter schools, and I supported them. Mm -hmm. And I spoke to some people and I explained you know, why I thought they were important, mm -hmm. what I think they could do to help people. And they said, you know, I was on the fence about this, but I think you're right, it does make mm -hmm. sense. Mm -hmm. So I think you know, so sometimes when you get into a situation that's sticky, that's controversial, again, mm -hmm. just honestly speaking about why you think you know, it was beneficial. And for me, in that particular argument, it was really about students who were underserved, students who came from low-income households, students of color lagging behind their peers, mm -hmm. and just really making sure that parents and students had more options in education. But that's one, one example of something mm -hmm. that was controversial where people were either really against it or said they weren't quite sure what to think, and mm -hmm. my argument helped sway them into the yes category. Well, So um, I have to admit, one of the greatest public speakers I have ever seen is William Jefferson Clinton, President Clinton. Mm -hmm. He is natural. Mm -hmm. He connects with people. Incredibly smart, incredibly mm -hmm. smart, and just really, in my opinion, makes that emotional connection. Mm -hmm. So I'd say he's probably one of the best public speakers. Mm -hmm. And then there are also just people you know, you know, people you associate with and, and friends you have, whether it's people in church that you've seen, like, mm -hmm. you know, Reverend Banks, or people that you've known for a long time, like, mm -hmm. you know, a mentor of mine, Lao Kwazim. And so it's just, you know, it's, it's mm -hmm. just people in your life. And even my, hus my husband, mm -hmm. he's a great public speaker. Mm -hmm. And you know, he's been an educator for a long time. He knows the topic inside and out. He is probably the smartest person I know. And you know, you hear him speak in front of a crowd and you can just see people are literally mesmerized by him. Mm -hmm. And so I think in many ways, being surrounded by people who mm -hmm. are great speakers, it does, it rubs off on you.